thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is your prospect top 10 list. Uh, we're going to get right into it right now with number 10. Something is Killing the Children, number 13. This book recently came out, uh, I think maybe like uh, a couple months ago, um, probably no more than six weeks ago, if, to refresh my memory. In the guts of this book, we have the first appearance, I, I would say, of Erica's monster. I think some people are calling it the golden dragon. Um, not to be confused with the old dragon, the leader of the St. George. This is the actual um, first appearance, last page panel of Erica's monster that's trapped inside Octo, her little soft puppet octopus. This is a very important book in which I don't want to spoil it for too much, but I think that has legs for the long term. Right now, it's a cover price book. I think I saw um, one go for maybe 10 bucks recently, and, and then I've seen them go below cover. I went to the comic shop today, saw them all through the, the shelves, a few in the back bins. So I would highly suggest this. There's also variants to this book. Um, great pick. Yeah, and I was super excited to see uh, Erica's monster and learning a little bit more about that. And it got me really hyped into the series to see what's going to happen in the next issue. And then, yeah, uh, with the, especially with the story arc coming close to an end. Totally agree. I mean, it's all it's an important part of her origin. Does that character make their first appearance on the uh, Jay Lee variant from number one? Is, is that where we yes. see that character for the first time? Yes. So yeah. the first cover appearance of Octo is the Jay Lee cover. Um, that cover, I believe, was open order. There's also a sketch cover that's way more rare. Um, but let's take the sketch one out. Of all the covers, all the variants, store variants, uh, you know, um, late printings or what have you, that it, the J. Lee cover is the only one I've seen, uh, to my knowledge, that has Octo on there. And when you and when you get in 13 and you get into 14, actually, when you get get from the whole series, but when you get to 13 and 14, you understand how important Octo is, and that's why you bring that up. That's a great point. That Jay Lee cover is a very important cover. And once collectors, investors find that out, that cover could explode. So that's an opportunity right there. All right. Look for that one on the list somewhere in the future. On to number nine. So this is Ice Cream Man number eight. And with Ha Ha being super popular, this is definitely a book to like that you should have if you're an ice cream follower or ice cream man follower. And like the writer writes for both series, and then there's rumors of uh, connecting the series together. Even if you read the storyline, uh, he's even referenced like when he's thrown over the bridge as Mr. Ha Ha. I mean, it, it was out there, was speculated on or what have you, that this was actually the clown from the, the first issue of Ha Ha. So yeah, that's great. And plus I remember when this issue first, first dropped, I, I bought it off the rack. I mean, it immediately, caught the attention of, of many other uh, collectors. I remember at one point it was like a $35 book or something in that area. So, you know, um, I haven't seen numbers on this book. I, I'm imagining that the uh, orders are probably under 20,000, probably under 15,000. You have to double check that. All right, to number eight. Okay, so this one we have um, Fantastic Four 185. You will ha actually have uh, multiple first appearances in this book. You have the first appearance of uh, Nicholas Scratch. Nicholas Scratch is a, actually a warlock and the son of Agatha Harkness. And multiple people are, are basically uh, speculating that the rabbit, they're calling Mr. Scratchy, is turns out to be Nicholas Scratch. So that rabbit probably is going to end up being Nicholas Scratch, um, Agatha or Agnes um, son in a later episode or what have you. And not to mention there's a second uh, first appearance in there. There's a first full team appearance of the Witches of New Salem. Why don't we move on to number seven? All right, this is Department of Truth number one, the one in 25 variant. Aaron, what do you got on this book? Yeah, so this is a beautiful Ed Hunt Lee cover, and especially with the news dropping that um, Department of Truth is going to be becoming a TV show, I think this is a grossly undervalued book. You know, earlier this week, it was $20. When the news dropped, it's going, you know, they're selling for $20 to $50 right now. And so, like, if you can pick it up at $20 for a 1 in 25 ratio, 
I don't think it's a bad play. Yeah, this is a really good value pickup, I think. Um, you know, a super popular series. Um, and, um, you know, for a 1 in 25 to be able to grab at these prices, something you should be scooping up. Uh, why don't we move on to number six? So here we have uh, Black Panther number three, and this this is from the 1998 series. In the guts, in story, is the first appearance of Achebe or Akebe. Um, basically, I just read this for the first time, but what I know about this book is just that he was uh, a, a brilliant guy who basically lost his mind. It's, it's psychotic. And you find out later that he sold his uh, soul to the devil or in continuity, it's Mephisto. Um, I know orders are low on this book. I believe last last I checked, they were under 47,000. You, you might want to check, or not low, but moderate, I should say, under 47,000. Um, could be even lower since it's a number three issue. Um, but the last time I checked, I believe it said 47. Double check that. Also, there is a new stand copy available for this book. Keep an eye out for that book, so uh, for that newsstand copy. So if this character gets pegged and it goes on your hunt list, um, when it, in that box where it says direct edition, as long as that direct edition's gone or that 59606 in the UPC SKU is gone, changed, it's probably a newsstand. Grab it up, swoop it up. Great pick. Good pick. Here we go. On to number five. So Miss Marvel, right? Um, we all know that she is coming to Disney+. Plus. Um, one of the heavyweights from Marvel's young characters. Um, this was a qualifier, um, a difficult book um, to pick up. Um, you know, right now it's you can probably find it for sixty to seventy-five. It's probably not going to stay there very long. Um, this is number one of her own series, um, and uh, you know, when I think about some of the biggest characters that are coming down the pike for Marvel. Um, Kamala Khan is at the very, very top of the list. Um, we all know she's got her own TV show. Um, and, you know, by all accounts, that's not going to be a one and done deal. Um, that's going to be a reoccurring series. So um, super excited about the character, super excited about this book. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think you brought up some great points. And, and for our listeners, this is Miss Marvel number one from the 2014 series. Like Ben was saying, the first solo title, CGC marks the guts of this book as Kamala Khan becomes Miss Marvel. There is some debate to that. Um, ben could probably touch more on it on Roundtable after or what have you, but. That's how CGC labels it. Um, also, in the guts or in story of this book, there's another first appearance, which is Zoe Zimmer. She's a, um, I guess you could say, a bully type um, character that eventually becomes friends down the line with Kamala Khan. And uh, she was just recently casted into the D Plus uh, um, series which could actually add a little more fuel to this book. I know most fans don't really care for the normies or, or you know, especially the new normies, so to speak. But, you know, you never know. Um, the, the actor that was casted could have personality and could add to Kamala and her abilities. Um, on the qualifier, I, I, I don't really uh, know how rare this is based on this qualifier due to the fact that uh, retailers had to exceed orders of Mighty Avengers number two from 2013, and then they ordered as and they were able to order as many as they wanted of this cover. But as but as far as I'm concerned, I've been looking for this book for at least four years, and I've only found one high grade copy that's within budget. So great pick, number four. Okay, so this is a case of. Yes, you need to judge a book by its cover. So we have Black Panther number six from the 2009 series. Now, at this time, Shuri is the Black Panther, and this is a 1940s homage to the era variant. Uh, it's a one in ten. This thing, this this cover is an absolute standout. There are Marvel did themes as far as. Um, as far as decades and this one and a lot of, uh, a lot of those kind of homage to the era variants there, you know, they were just kind of funny, light, cheeky, but this one, this one 
has uh, this one packs the punch. This one has all of the action. It's intense. If you compare it to other, if you compare it to other covers um, from this from this theme, this is definitely the standout. And uh, the price on this, the buy-in is probably less than twenty dollars. This thing is really affordable. I remember coming across this book years ago and it was dirt cheap and it's slowly 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 uh starting to come into its own nice yeah good stuff carter you know what's always caught my eye on this book is the trade dress i don't know what it is mm. but it catches my eye every single time i see it really good right stuff. really good stuff let's go on to number three all right so we have miles morales spider-man number 18. this is actually the second print um my peers teammates and i vote on these picks and uh, what have you i was aggressive on this pick um due to the fact that in the weeks to come we have the clo the clone story arc um or saga the clone saga that will be um uh, continued um by Salman ahmed and uh with miles morales and the assessor and probably ultimatum what have you well i like this 18 because this is the first full appearance of the clone um you actually get the reveal of what the clone is and what happens to the clone so on and so forth plus this this um is a great cover it has the clone on the cover in which even i mean as much as i like the cover a and the raza and the one per store 81st happy birthday uh, marvel uh variant I think this is by far the best cover. I think the order, I believe last time I checked, the orders were under 3,500, probably closer to 3,100. Um, I think this could be the winner of all the covers. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, I really like this cover as well, Richie. You know, if I'm not mistaken, this is interior art, right? And interior art oftentimes gets a bad rap, I think, in these covers, but this yeah. one really works exceptionally well. It pops. It's powerful. I absolutely love it. All right. On to number two. What do you got, Steve? Well, I've got Half Price Crook. Half Price Crook. <laughs> His pick. Um, and I'm, I'm just jealous because, you know, we've been talking through the weeks uh, as a group. And you've been uh, – our viewers have been seeing, you know, hey, we've seen the 80s franchises. What are the 90s franchises? You know, we've identified Power Rangers and Turtles. Um and Pokemon's got to be, and, and Sonic we've talked about, but Pokemon's got to be another one of those 90s franchises. Um, so this is the first Pikachu and the first Ash. Um, now, this is tough to um, identify uh, because there's been 16 printings of this book. Wow. Um, and there's actually... Um, <laughs> A great post. I love to give credit where credit's due. There's a username, Quayar, Q-A-L-Y-A-R, did a post um, on the CGC boards on this. And apparently there was a sampler included um, with a VHS tape uh, that was uh, this book, but it cut off halfway. It was like a sampler. Um but it, no matter what's the case, I couldn't even find the first print in the census. I don't think anyone's, and I know these were printed. I mean, who, who knows, you know, how, how many hundreds of thousands of even the first printings um, exist. But apparently no one's actually um, uh, graded a, um, a first print of the Electric Tale of Pikachu uh, which is this book, and um, got to think uh, with what we've seen with with Power Rangers, Sonic, some of the other books that we've mentioned, that this will uh, some someone's going to be first to market, uh, unless I've totally missed something uh, with uh, CG scene, and uh, and I'm sure someone will get down into the guts of this and figure out, you know, how do you tell if it's the first print. Um, I believe the one that came with the VHS tape does have some trade dress that says, you know, uh, included with this VHS tape. But um, uh, th th this is um, 
I, I can see this catching some heat. We've seen some crazy things in the past 12 months, and I, I think this is the next crazy thing. Well, look at Pokemon cards. I mean, they're yep. on literally fire. I mean, I know that's a whole separate thing, but. Yep. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. All right. Here's our top pick of the week. This one's a no-brainer. Contest of Champions number one, one in 25, uh, Lionel Francis U variant. Uh, this is a book that I've loved for years. Uh, I remember when it first came out. This is probably, what, 2015 or something like that. And, like, just right out of the gate, I think this book was – it was a moderate hit. White she Box, does. I mean, that, I think that's what really drives this issue. Uh, she's mm -hmm. right front and center here on the cover. Um you know, what I would say is there's some in misinformation floating around that this is her first and only cover appearance. Um, that's not true. There is a open order book where she appears as well. Um, but if you're if you're really specking on her, uh, this is this, the best cover. This is the one to get. This is absolutely yeah. the one to get. Um, and listen, I think she's going to have a major role. We just show, saw her show up um, in the most recent Taskmaster. Uh, book and a um, uh, super attractive um, uh, number one. I'd, I'd be grabbing this if you saw it out there. This book is going for what forty to fifty dollars right now. Yeah, I would say a little bit more than that. Um, okay. I haven't bought it in a while. When I when I picked it up, it was thirty thirty five. I feel like it's higher than that now. Mm -hmm. If you see it for forty, grab it, run, don't talk to anyone, just get out the door. I personally have never found it. I've been looking for it um, for, well, when did when did War of Realms, New Age of Atlas 1 drop? July of 2019. So that's when I, how that long I've been looking for it. So mm. almost a year and a half, two years, uh, because I wasn't familiar with White Fox, but now I am, and she's a part of New Agents of Atlas. So, you know, uh, long story short, yes, this is definitely on my list, and I will definitely be going to buy this book. <laughs> All right. Well, nice thank book. you guys very much for joining us tonight. Um, please tune in next week for our next episode. Um, we'll, we'll catch you soon. Thank you very much.